A lot of people, just their perception of therapy is like something has to be wrong with you in order for you to go to therapy. Like you have to have some mental like problem in order to go to therapy when that's just not the case. My mom secretly wanted me to be a tennis player. So like when she graduated college, she went to the French Open, which was like a very long time ago. And she, I think she just, she always wanted me to be a tennis player. So as soon as I like showed legit interest in the sport, she was like, okay, this is, we're gonna do this. I mean, I didn't find this out until like probably like five years ago. Or I found it out when I made the finals of the French Open. She was like, do you know that I went to the French Open like before I even, thought of you and I was like, what? <laughs> so now the running joke is that she always secretly wanted me to be a tennis player. I think it's like a feeling, right? So like when you feel that you're at your best, everything's kind of like free flowing. You're not really thinking about too much. Things are clicking, like timing is always right. Like you're in a groove, like your routine is pretty much down pat. You're like, okay, things are like feeling good now. Like I'm happy with this, I'm happy with that. And I think you don't, we don't emphasize, like as humans don't emphasize enough, like when it's good, like you very much like sulk on when it's bad and like how bad it is and how bad it's gonna be instead of just being like, okay, let me get out of that and get back to the good feeling. I feel like in tennis and just being an athlete, we kind of get stuck on like everything that's going wrong. It's tough. I would say that for tennis, obviously, since we play every week, like every week there's a new winner, every week there's like something happening, there's some type of adversity, there's something going on. And I think to be able to kind of like manage that and manage your emotions, like whoever manages themselves best throughout the year is probably the person who has the better results, probably the happiest in their life, like just, you know, managing well. Like tennis is a game of management, like you're traveling around the world all of the time and like trying to figure out what works best for you and your routine and your team and the people you're responsible for. I started therapy. My mom was a psychologist, so we practice a lot of things at home from a young age, but I started therapy um, because I needed to see a grief counselor because my dad had passed away and my mom felt like she couldn't help me and that I needed someone else to speak to. And then shortly after that, my stepdad passed away. And so she really felt like she couldn't help me. So I think as a parent feeling like that helplessness, she was like, you have to go see someone and like talk through it. So my brother and I started therapy. I was 15. At the time, it was more of, we didn't understand why we had to go or why we were there, but we I really liked the therapist that I, I went to. She was very soothing. She was very understanding. Um, I think I, I was going through a time where I was trying to figure out what was going on with my tennis, if I wanted to go to college, if I wanted to turn pro. And like I think a lot of those emotions that I was feeling weren't necessarily like totally directed towards tennis. It was more of everything else that was going on in my life. And so I felt a lot of comfort in that. And uh, my brother was, he's six years younger than me. So he was at a different stage in his life, kind of just trying to understand what was going on. And I think for him, he obviously had a different experience totally than, than I did. Um, but I think it, it helped us both a lot just because we were confused, I would say. And I feel like having my mom is a psychologist, obviously. She's always, you know, made the importance of therapy. Like she's always made sure that was a thing in our lives and self-care, like my mom's always taught us that. It was something that was very normal and natural, like talking about your feelings, like expressing yourself, like, you know, finding ways to get out your feelings and figure it out. If you can't, you know, if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of someone else. And I think a lot of um, my life, like obviously like helping my mom with my brother and like just kind of all of us getting through what we've been through together has been a lot, but my mom's obviously been super supportive and vocal about our situation.
For everyone, it's different. It's definitely about how you're raised and like what you're brought up, like being told about therapy and like why people go to a therapist. Like during quarantine, I was speaking to my therapist and I had told someone, oh, like I have to go. Like I have to talk to my therapist. So like I can't talk to you, like I gotta go. And the person said to me like, oh, only crazy people go to therapists. Like is something wrong with you? Like do you need medication? And I was like, why would I need medication? And I was like, I'm good. Like I love my therapist. Like. She's the best thing that happened to me. Like, what are you talking about? And I think a lot of people, just their perception of therapy is like something has to be wrong with you in order for you to go to therapy. Like you have to have some mental like problem in order to go to therapy when that's just not the case. It's such a stigma about like going to therapy. I love my therapist. She's the best. Like, I love it. But for other people, it's like, you're a crazy person. To get like to really the bottom of it and be able to be completely transparent, completely raw with someone, them not judging you, you just saying your feelings, how you feel, how how you want to do something or how you want somebody else to receive it, like talking about those things, like that's really important I think just for life because if you can't be fully transparent and like lay all of your feelings out there, like it's hard, like it's hard going through life, like having to be like a little bit secretive or a little bit like hidden or a little bit not yourself, but then going to a therapist and getting that confirmation, like, yes, like that is a valid feeling. It's also like really reassuring. When you're younger, there's a lot more expectation because it's like the new upcoming player and like the next best thing that, I think plays a, a toll on a lot of like younger players coming up. And obviously at some point, many years ago, I was that player. And I think not knowing how to manage that, being new on the tour, being new to the circuit, like, you know, maybe like traveling for the first time, like in Europe, like playing these big events, like playing these big tournaments, like it was scary. Like it was a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of like anxiety, like attached to like having those expectations. But I think once you get out of that, then there's like a new player or, a new, or someone else doing well. Like it kind of, it eases, but it's it's always tough. You have to manage it while you're in it. And once you're like out of it and you've like learned how to like figure out and navigate your career, it becomes a lot easier. Well, I love self-care. I love taking care of myself. I think for me, like my biggest thing is feeling good. Obviously when you play a sport and you travel around the world, like the feelings that you feel when you're traveling are very important. Like when you're away from home, like managing that, when you're traveling, a lot of adversity, like obviously airports, planes, trains, the whole thing. Like there's a lot that goes on and I think people forget to take care of themselves and like what makes them feel good. I love like meditating. I love just like stretching with my trainer. Like I love quiet time. Like those are all things that I've kind of implemented into my like work life. I like to do a lot of like breathing. So for me, when I feel super anxious or I feel like overwhelmed, I like to do like the deep breathing meditation. That helps me a lot just personally. Like when the anxiety gets high, like I'm like, okay, I need to take it. Like I need to take a minute. And I always tell like my coaches, my team, I'm like, okay, I need a beat because I'm like feeling a little like my heart's racing. <laughs> so I feel like that's helped me a lot. I love like deep breathing and I love making my team do it. It also kind of like relaxes me to have like some support. I didn't have Twitter like on my phone for like four years. Like I just couldn't handle like the stress of like every single match I played, like someone being pissed off or before every tournament, like the draws all coming up on Twitter and like people talking about it or every like everyone's gossip, like tennis gossip just on the internet. Like it's just very overwhelming. And I think for a lot of people, like depending on your anxiety levels or however you may feel about certain things, like affects people differently. And for me, Twitter and I had a very tough relationship. I think whatever you put into the universe, like you can't get back, which is one of those crazy concepts of like just how the world works and like the internet. It's a balance. And I think a lot of the times it's an unhealthy balance, but people have to kind of learn how to manage it just because it's kind of like a never, like we don't have any control over 
like social media. Like I use social media to like check on like my friends and like my neighbors and like people, my family members, like things like that. And like a lot of people don't use social media for that. I think it's like so ingrained in us now that like anybody, like once you fi like finish something, you like check your email, you check your texts. Like I check my texts and my email, then maybe like Instagram DMs or like something like that. And I think that's like a normal like habit. So whatever you've done normally, win or lose, like if even if you're feeling fine about it and you just lost, like other people don't feel fine about it. So like the reaction is like you do your normal stuff, but like then you have like that like part to deal with. Like I have people who text me after like every single match. Like my uncle Steve literally texts me after every single match. My mom texts me, my husband, like just like those normal people text me all the time. If it's not like three o'clock in the morning, but um, most of the time I have like pretty consistent texters and then nobody really texts me during the match. Unless it's someone who doesn't know I'm playing or if it's like a business email or like something like that, I don't really get anything like during my normal communication through my actual phone, like my phone number is normal. But I would say like my socials are always, no matter win or lose, it's always bad. Whatever happens in your match, win or lose, you're always gonna get abused. You're always gonna get like punished for whatever it is that you did on the court, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. So I think having that consistent like circle around you that you trust and that you're able to communicate with is really important. My top three tips for taking care of myself are spa days, um, eating whatever I want on one day of the week to make myself feel good. And then my third tip would be uh, self-awareness, like self-identification, like identifying whatever it is that you need in the moment to be able to take care of yourself. When I'm feeling stuck, I get unstuck by First, identifying whatever it is that's making me feel yucky, and then I immediately act on whatever that is. Pre-match, sometimes you feel nervous, sometimes you feel a little anxiety. I personally like to just have like five minutes of like calm, nothing, no noise, just like lay down, look at the back of my eyelids and just like relax. Like that helps me just kind of like ease the pain, like I need a couple of deep breaths. I need to just, I've like identified that I need to like relax because there's a lot happening and just to kind of like reduce the overwhelming like anxiety or butterflies that I'm feeling. Like I just need to like close my eyes for a minute and like regroup.